of our own as a country, but as the people who are in this in the business of sex work, they claim to be sex workers. Mm. Well, then the reason why we want sex work to be decriminalized, it's very simple. My colleague has just mentioned it. Uh, sex work is the longest profession, really. Before the Constitution in Uganda, the history tells us people use actually to exchange, uh, like to negotiate for sexual services in exchange for properties like buildings, wow. like companies, like land, a plot of land, or chunks of land. But when the Constitution was introduced, and also the population of Uganda grew up, I think the demand, like. Uh, go, go, uh, went down, but also because the population had grown, so people started negotiation for uh, pays in terms of monetary values. Of course, in terms of um, in terms of uh, other payments, it's still happening. Somebody can choose to buy a car, uh, to give you a plot, or maybe a land, literally anything, as long as you the two, the two adult consent mm. on the agreement in terms of payment. So, Martin, before we jump away from decriminalization and legalization of it, what is the difference there? Because once we take out the decriminalization of it, don't we say that it is actually yes. legal? Yeah. Because those are two words that they, they seem to be two different things, but the same. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the legalization aspect pushes sex workers onto the walls. There are a lot of uh, demands, a lot of, uh, again, legal implications that actually are put onto the sex workers. So at the end of the day, it also pushes them underground. So the other thing when we decriminalize, it's actually we are, tell we are telling people like, because right now it is criminalization. So we are saying stop the criminalization. Why do we want decriminalization? We've seen the impact of criminalization. There is a high rate of sexual violence. There is high rate of exploitation especially from the, the, um, the authorities, actually themselves. For example, when you look at this report, it was done by HIRAF, Human Rights Awareness Promotion Forum, but uh, it was done in Kampala, Mukono, Wakiso. But the biggest, uh, uh, exp uh, the biggest uh, violators of human rights, I mean, ex uh, of, of, of violence, they're actually local authorities. So you'll find that most times, because of criminalization, people take advantage of the sex workers. Many sex workers have established groups, they have established formed uh, small groups to do savings, but you find that they cannot continue actually utilize this money because every time they are walking away, they are arrested, and then there is no evidence to prove or to convict this person. So to buy out their freedom, you have to pay to the police officers. So at the end of the day, you find that every time they make money, the money actually ends up in the hands of the police officers. Mm, the so police and officers. they say, yeah, but not him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the, the the point of why we want really decrim, we assume that if decrim is done, then exploitation won't happen. People will be able to invest, make their money, make savings, but also invest. Uh, first of all, when you criminalize sex work, is not criminal. Is not. Uh, cr um, recognized as a profession. So if it's not recognized, you cannot even get a loan from the bank to make a huge investment. So if we decrease, we, we assume that op different opportunities will pop up. People will be able to secure loans, people will be able to invest, people will be like live a really better life. Well, good let life. me ask you this. Sure. So we are pushing for sex work, not actually to be decriminalized and we're not pushing for it to be legalized yeah. and we know that any operations under of course the boundaries of Uganda mm -hmm. actually do happen because they have a provision of the law the law has its permissible you know kind of you know acceptance to these particular operations yeah. So if we have sex work be decriminalized but not legalized, ideally wouldn't we be pushing for one thing and still, you know, not getting it right at the other hand because still it will not be a legal trade. Yeah. Yeah, it won't be a legal trait, but also learning from other countries that, for example, have legalized, like for example, Senegal. Mm -hmm. Still, we are seeing that sexual violence is still quite high. We are seeing exploitation is still high. The reason is very simple, because they, what they do, they gazette areas, and they say, sex workers, you're going to operate in these areas. The conditions you must pay, probably, maybe part of your income, this percentage should come to this, should be this, this tax. And you'll find that working conditions, again, are not really like very clear, or maybe they're exploiting the person who are the who is in the business. But decrim, it's going to be like any other profession, you know? So there won't be terms and conditions, just like somebody who is a lawyer, a doctor, a teacher. But the, the, many people that are in this <laughs> profession are not there because they want to. 
So instead of fighting for decriminalizing this profession that very many people are part of not because they want to, how about you concentrate on making sure these people are not part of this, pro uh, this, this profession and are doing something that they, they're proud of? Mm. Mm, why is it that you're concentrating on, did you say, well, not legalizing, but uh, why are you concentrating on making it more tangible, yet the people who are doing it are not there because they want to? Why are you not fighting to see that these people who are in this profession, that we are we're well aware, they're not very proud of, mm -hmm. they, they, they're not there because they wanted to, why are you not fighting to get them out and get them into other jobs where they can, you know, um, feel like no one wants to, no, no, one's, no one wants their body, you know, to be used that way hmm. as a profession. So why are you concentrating on decriminalizing it and not concentrating on getting them out of that profession and getting them into better professions? Well, just to respond to your response, you're right in your perspective. But also, uh, why not everybody is actually working on NTV? The reason is very simple. There are so many sex workers on the streets, in the brothels, at international, people who don't have even operate here, like they travel to Dubai, they work in India, I mean in the, in the Arab countries, a lot is really happening. And also there is the issue of social class. There are people who are earning hugely out of this profession, really hugely, and they've never even dreamt of actually quitting sex work. But I hear you, there are also others, for example, that have been coerced into the business. Definitely those ones will be willing to win the draw. But also the other thing that we have to think about is change is a gradual process. If people are not have not been listened to, do not have have not been given the option, definitely they will not be they will not quit. Because somebody to quit, it's the person's choice. You cannot impose and tell them, you know what, you must stop. Or I'm going to arrest you and I'm taking you to the police. Even if they go to police, they'll still do sex work for food. So change, a choice, they're very important issues to consider in this whole process. So McLean, as you talk about how the choices are something you need to consider, going back to the fact that if we decriminalize it, decriminalizing prostitution in Uganda, you mentioned one thing is that they'll be able to have their money, it won't be taken away by police officers, yes. they could be able to go to banks and get loans mm -hmm. because it's now looked at as a profession. Mm -hmm. Would they be paying tax as well? Yeah, of course. Even today, they are, I mean, they are still paying taxes. For they example, are. the OT. I mean, <laughs> like, you know, we are no longer paying the he says, tax. okay, pay yeah, you yes, are tax. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was saying. Yes, yes, they are paying OTT, but also, because we no longer have the head tax, you know, so... Like the sugar we buy, the fuel, literally everything that any Ugandan is actually pursuing or purchasing, sex workers are also being Martin, are we not? Are we not destroying our moral fabric? Mm -hmm. Are we not going, like shooting ourselves in the leg, so to speak? You're a woman, I'm a woman, and uh, I don't know if you have children, but I do. Mm -hmm. And I'm worried with the direction that maybe the, uh, Africa is taking, us trying to imitate what the first world is doing mm -hmm. and if we have such conversations even now trying to decriminalize prostitutions what then will the future hold for our young ones actually just to respond to that the beauty about decrim then we shall be able to protect the children but right now, a lot is happening. How behind. do we get to protect the children by decriminalizing prostitution? Because when we decriminalize, we are looking at the other adult, the 18 and above, conscientious sexual services, and also again, they have conditions, they have ID. Like the process is going to be very clear, which, which which is not happening right now because of criminalization. Right now, we are seeing a lot of girls into prostitution. Actually, a lot of minors getting into prostitution, and nobody even wants to talk about that. Nobody wants to hear about that. And all these children, actually, our children are your children are every ugandan children but because the the situation is not really like clear or the process is kind of uh, like a cobweb operating in a cobweb so definitely you cannot even get the person who is trafficking into uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the young ones into this whole process so when we do this we assume or we see that it will be a very there will be very uh, clear trends on how to address issues or to protect our children not to get into this but also to actually give them the right support but because if you promote it because i <coughs> think this is promoting prostitution if you promote it how then do you end up protecting them and yet you're promoting the vice 
you know are we not telling our young girls and and already the space is becoming so worrying mm -hmm. because now girls we are seeing a majority Rita we always see this when you're driving mm -hmm. to work mm -hmm. a majority of girls even when we have you know our engagements at the universities a majority who are saying why should I hustle why should I wake up early in the morning why should I put in the hard work mm -hmm. and yet I can just go and sleep with someone and I get this money mm -hmm. are we not missing the point here of trying to preach the right messages to our girls and it's not just girls even men are now getting into the space as yeah. well um, one thing I can say about this whole process you know when you create uh, a room for discussions you are able to find strategies as well but every time you kind of deter people from coming out to express their issues to address these challenges definitely you are, we are losing it now talking about the culture the morals and all this really like I said until when the HIV score actually hit Uganda when the, we had the, the the Constitution in 1985 I think sex work was not, not a big deal it wasn't an, an issue so for us we are saying that the whole issue of moral I mean all of us we've got morals mm -hmm. and we've, we are a diverse cultures my morals in Buganda will not be the morals of somebody in Masindi or somebody in the northern region so morals are for individuals you, you get so for me my thinking is I have children I'm a mother and to be honest I wouldn't say I wouldn't want to see my child operating or getting into this profession in the situation it is today now and I don't you know and what the, this if, person if the situation changes would you I don't know I, do, I cannot dictate what my child will become 10 years a thousand years to come in future but what I'm saying is the environment should be supportive should be protective you know of whoever is into this profession so if we're saying that we're going to support it and make sure that it protects whoever is within the environment just this past few weeks we have been talking about the whole miscarry conversation a number of women jumping on board and saying but we have made so many steps as women but we have so many women in different high positions within the government within different organizations within the country mm -hmm. that surely we should be moving away from things that would have women just being looked at as objects Yes. Mm -hmm. Now some would say, one would say, I'll use what I have, my hands. Maybe I'll use my body, I'll be a model. Yes. Are you saying that the women should use what they have, which is their bodies in this case? Well, it goes back to personal choice. Because if somebody wants to be a teacher, I cannot say you must be a doctor. Because if I force you to become a doctor, definitely you won't benefit out of that profession. But Nadine, where would we have the line and say that not everything that you want you should have? Some things are bad for you. But also in Uganda, we should also be very realistic that everything in Uganda happens. Literally everything. So for me, the issue of actually even sex work is not a big deal. Because we are seeing issues of rape, issues of sexual violence, issues of corruption. And all things really are happening. And nobody is paying attention to such things. So as McCain talks about how it is a reality now in regards to prostitution and we should be decriminalizing it, we have asked you on social media what you think of that. And taking you to David Rukasi, who is going to be taking us through your comments on Twitter and Facebook. Over to you, David. Uh, very, very interesting uh, discussion this morning. Should prostitution be decriminalized and um, McLean seems very 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 passionate about this and so are the comments today. Uh, Maxi Sam says surely Uganda has gone astray why would you decriminalize prostitution only if you are one of them then you say yes. I um, Nebiona Zach says if legalized will Uganda's motto still read as for God and my country? Uganda still has enough land to use for agriculture. I advise these prostitutes to try that. Otherwise, Uganda belongs to God. Well, but McLean, I told you we should uh, be looking at other avenues of getting uh, these prostitutes out of their profession and into other businesses. And it looks like uh, I Nebiona Zach agrees with me. Uh, Maxi Sam, uh, thank you very much for that comment. Already um, went through that. Um, Charlene Chirabo, you say, uh, so sex should be included amongst the employment opportunities available in the country? Really? I'm so disappointed and hope the parliament will negate this. Um, well, no support for you as yet, McLean. Um, sorry, it's not me. Um, Ugandan parliament, with the increase in levels of unemployment, decriminalizing is Im imperative. These women need to make ends meet. 
There you go. Finally, you're getting some support, McLean. <laughs> um, more uh, coming from Prophet, uh, Prophet Mbonye, not the Prophet. Please don't get this uh, wrong. He says, with the increase in levels of unemployment, um, okay, yo, uh, we went through this one um, already. And uh, those are some of the comments coming off. Uh, in case you want to join in on the conversation, the hashtag is morning at NTV. And the question we're asking today is um, a very interesting one. Should prostitution be decriminalized? Back to you, Rita and Mala. So, as we were having, as you were actually sampling the comments, David, Martin did say something. For all of that, we're saying prostitutes, prostitutes, prostitutes. She echoed the word sex, sex workers. workers. So, Martin, what is the difference between these two terms? Because there's a lot that I'm learning this morning, and I think you need to be learning as well. Um, prostitute is uh, not our term. Okay in terms of how women like phrase the issue of the bodily integrity in the way of how you use your body to earn a living but it's a, a term that was probably borrowed in india and it came along within our constitution so we adopted it and the reason uh, because we are, we are ugandans we are women in uganda but also sex workers in uganda claim a prostitute is probably the person who doesn't know what they want. They can have sex or sex change sexual services for any reason. But a sex worker has got principles. You negotiate before you actually get into the, 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 the you get into the act, and you probably you pay before you actually have the sexual mm -hmm. services. Upfront payment. Yes. yes. <laughs> so <laughs> good this is the wow. Why? <laughs> yes, so, so the difference is really like the conditions in terms of the conditions set to actually uh, provide, get uh, and, secure and get the service. service. Martin, aren't, you, aren't you trying to call a spoon a, a small spade? It's, it's the same thing. It's not the same it's, thing. It's, it's the same thing. It's, it's, it's you just trying to find a, a way of twisting these words to make us believe that it's a different thing. Because and, and, and quite understandably, because you're fighting for this, you, you, you understandably want us to think of it in a different way. I thought you asked me because you wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> but then you seem to put okay, okay, yes, okay. into your history. Okay. So I was okay. also just giving you the right. Let me, uh, Mate, do you really think you're going to get ahead well on this? Do you really think as you come um, to close. that people will not agree with you on this? Yes, I think we are going to get headway. Why? Because the population is really quite huge. If you are at the national level, slaying at that level, definitely you won't know what is happening at a grassroots. But when you really get onto the street, like you're saying, when you're driving, you will see the whole of Kampala streets floating. And actually, not only with Kampala right now, many girls, every but district. As you speak, McLean, the girls that we're seeing in this video. Those are young girls that are engaged in this. Mm -hmm. By the legalizing or the decriminalizing, decriminalizing. now that I'm learning, mm -hmm. the decriminalizing of this, how do you protect girls like this? Because one would say, but it, it, it is it's a profession. Under, yeah. mm -hmm. These are young girls. Are now, you going to have a register where you register all the prostitutes in the country? That, that's not my role as McLean or as our organization or any organization that is working with sex workers. But for me, like I said, when you see these young girls, Right now, the sex workers themselves, the adult sex workers, cannot even come close to these girls. Why? They are going to be considered as they are trafficking uh -huh. them. But when we decriminalize, there will be opportunities whereby there is a chance for you to actually support that girl. Because no, no sex worker would want to see her child at that age, or such a child, actually engaging, engaging in, so, in such act. Why? Their level of exploitation is so high. They do not have the skills in terms of negotiation. They can't use the family planning. They don't know how to use the condom. So literally, they're innocent. Okay. And men want to take advantage of such innocent Individuals. Thank you so much, McLean. Wow. Um, yeah. it's <laughs> That's a discussion that I'll just be honest. I think my heart is almost getting out of my body because it, come out. <laughs> <laughs> it should stay there. This is, okay, this, is. this is a conversation we need to have yet again. Of course, yeah. here on the show, Morning at NTV, the hashtag will still be remaining as Morning at NTV. Keep your views coming. McLean will look at them, of course, with the people that she's working with to ensure that prostitution is decriminalized in Uganda. What are your views? Morning at NTV still continues. Thank you so much, McLean, for coming in studios, the ED of uh, the Alliance of Women Advocating for Change. Thank you so much. Don't go too far. Morning at NTV still continues.
coming soon on NTV. NTV presents another exciting must-watch drama series.